what's going on guys it's brian and jack with simple man's comics and here we are again kicking the week off with that top 10 back issue comic books for you to be on the lookout for right that's right we've got some unexpected choices this week a couple that you may argue and a few that i'm sure you will love so we are excited to get into it yes we are premiering this labor day weekend by after, by tomorrow pretty much everyone's kids will be back in school i know mine started and yes online learning sucks when you're trying to telework but enough of that let's get into the top 10. coming in at number 10 we get that brand new boom book we only find them when they're dead number one this has been a lot of buzz but some people aren't picking it up and it's got that great writer now ewing right Right. This has had huge buzz. And on top of the huge buzz, the reviews have been incredible. We talked about this when Seven Secret dropped. We put it on the list. Um, I know some people don't love that we're putting some of these books right after their release on the list. But here's the reason why. You're never going to be able to buy a book cheaper than cover price. So this is the point in time where you're still able to go to LCS and find this book for cover price. You're still able to find large retailers that have copies for cover price. You're still able to find um, retailers that have exclusives available. You still have all of these options. Um, and this is a series that you have to look at the way that people are talking about it. Al Ewing is a guy who has really expanded universes. When he did Avengers, that's what you got. Um, when he did uh, Mortal Hulk, that's what you're getting. And that has really led people to believe that this series, where he doesn't have um, the constraints of continuity of other writers, um, of characters that are like long-standing IP where he can kind of play in his own sandbox, in his own toys, do what he wants. Um, he's going to really lend to some long-term success. Plus, we've heard that places like Netflix and other uh, movie studios are always looking for the things you always hear is everybody wants a Harry Potter and everybody wants a Star Wars. And this could be some movie studio, Star Wars or Guardians of the Galaxy. And for that reason, I really think for cover price, now is the time to make sure you grab this book. I'll take a Star Wars and a Game of Thrones minus season five. Everyone else can have Harry Potter. <laughs> Hitting us at the nine spot this week. We've talked about Green Hornet before, but here we're talking about Green Hornet number one, that 1989 volume. Yeah, so now here's the thing. Green Hornet is going to get more popular. I really believe that. Um, we've got a movie coming out. We've got an animated show coming out. Uh, Kevin Smith attached to the animated show. Um, Seth Rogen producing the movie. And if that turns you off because of the Seth Rogen star movie, understand that he, he learned from his mistakes there. And this is also the guy that's been behind Preacher and the boys. Um, he's very committed to doing comic book properties and he wants to do Green Hornet right. So I really believe they're going to be able to do that. So you start looking like, where are the investable books with Green Hornet? Now we've talked about the Green Hornet issue from the Dynamite Run that featured the children of Green Hornet and Cato. Um, that will really play into the animated series that Kevin Smith is doing. Why is this book on the list? Well, simply, it's just massively undervalued. It has iconic cover art from Jim Storenko. You don't have a lot of 80s Storenko cover art, and you certainly don't have a lot that is uh, iconic as this, but this cover art uh, is one of those depictions of Green Hornet that I think really stands the, the test of time, and so much attention kind of gets put on a lot of the Alex Ross stuff, and rightfully so, because Certainly nobody can say anything bad about Alex Ross artwork, but Strank was a legend. Uh, he's an old school legend, an OG in the comics game. And I think that this is a cover that has really been ignored and overlooked. It's a $10 or below book. And if this character really does become popular uh, the way I think it has the potential to be popular, and I say this character, really these characters, because we're looking at Green Hornet and Kato, um, people are going to be looking for books to put their money into. A lot of that gold key stuff isn't going to really resonate the same way. Um, and a lot, a lot of like the golden age stuff is the same way. So people are going to look for those books. This fits into multiple trends, uh, both TV, movie, as well as animated. And on top of it, 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 it's, again, a book. First appearance is too expensive. People are going to look for that next best thing. How can you beat a beautiful Storanko cover? Then hitting the list at the eight spot, we got some great affordable books in those Heroes Reborn issues, right? Yeah, so they're affordable. I don't know about great. But he, and this is one that I expect to get heat on, and I love it. Bring the heat. Um, Heroes Reborn was the biggest, one of the biggest catastrophes in comics history. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, just to give you the very Cliff Notes version, I'm sure I'll get beat up in the comment section, but the image creators left. All, all the original Image guys left. They were at Marvel. They left. They started Image. Um, 
this left a big void with Marvel. They certainly felt it. Image became the biggest, hottest thing. And then at some point, Marvel had this idea to come back to several of these image creators, Rob Liefeld, um, Jim Lee, throw a whole bunch of money at them to try to get them to come do this Heroes Reborn initiative where they got their own kind of almost label of, of books, a bunch of brand new number ones, a new Iron Man, a new uh, Avengers, a new Captain America. And they were just a disaster. It was, it was a sales disaster. It, none of those stories or um, a series are, have ever been like considered um, important or iconic. Uh, the artwork has often been subpar compared to the uh, artwork. Uh, in, no matter how you want to judge like Rob Liefeld, it's, it's still worse Rob Liefeld than typical Rob Liefeld. It's worse Jim Lee than typical Jim Lee. Um, and it, it just seemed like they were paid a lot of money, but they didn't like the way it went and they mailed it. And there's so much drama surrounding this, this reboot. And so the question would be like, well, why am I advocating you to invest in something that was such a monumental catastrophe? Well, because that's the point. It was that much of a monumental catastrophe. Um, think about movies that have like that lore of disaster when they're filming them, right? Just there's certain movies that are so bad, they're good. I, my argument is that Heroes Were Born is so bad that it's good. It's so bad that these covers, these number one issues of like Avengers and uh, you know, in, in Captain America and Iron Man and so on and so forth um, are books that very well could have popularity. If one thing happens, if there is ever like a documentary, we've seen this, the popularity of these like docu-series and the comics industry hasn't really gotten on board with this. Look at the popularity that the image documentary has had. But look what Last Dance did for like basketball cards. If you're not familiar, every episode of Last Dance, any player they talked about, their, their rookie card spiked just because it introduced them to a whole new audience. I don't think a lot of the new school collectors are even aware of the whole fiasco surrounding Heroes Were Born. And it would be really fascinating if this got exposed to a, a, a newer audience who maybe looks at these artists and writers with high esteem and realize that, hey, they had a major, major snafu in their career. That would all be all it takes for these issues to become iconic. And either way, as you said, Brian, dirt cheap. These are like dollar bin. You never pay more than a dollar. Then that um, nickel bin. Yeah, these are these are exactly the type of books that I actually I will grab regularly when I'm doing that like fill a long box up for fifty bucks type thing. Um, these are the kind of books that I look for because you just if you can pick them up for ten cents, you just really never know. Um, so. I'll take the heat on this one, but this, is, this is, to me is one of those long-term picks that other people aren't going to have the balls to make. And if you do, it may just pan out in a major way for you. Yeah, this is going to be that pick that people see the graphic and not this video, and they, they go all off on the comments because they're, they're like, oh, you don't know about Heroes Report and how terrible it was, and <laughs> the Rob Liefeld Captain America with the giant chest. And I, yeah, Heroes Report, that's going for like 27 cents on eBay right now. Why is that on this list? <laughs> right. That's why this isn't the hot list. This isn't the top list. These are 10 back issues. Definitely be on the lookout with an eye towards the future. Number seven, we got that first appearance of Squadron Supreme in Avengers number 85. Right. This is like the cool kid who just isn't cool anymore. This book was red hot when Squadron Supreme came back with a new number one. And we've seen that before, right? Temporary publishing hype. When Scott, Squadron Supreme came back, which is, again, we've talked about this on the channel before. If you guys are not familiar, Marvel is going to bring back old teams, old properties from time to time because they have to in order to maintain licensing rights. So sometimes they bring back a team and everybody gets excited. And this is what happened with Squadron Supreme. Everybody goes, oh, oh man, there's going to be a Squadron Supreme movie. Why else would they do a series? And really now they just maintain the license. They do a series. It doesn't sell well. And then it goes away. But either way, that has caused this first appearance to drop and drop heavily and either way this is a character or a team that has some interesting characters that really could play well into the mcu one day i do think it's possible and we've talked about the multi-platform um strategy that marvel and disney have where they have disney plus and the mcu feature length movies there's a lot of different ways a team like this could be utilized and released and either way the price has gotten so cheap on this book in comparison i'm talking about like a fifth of what it was selling for uh, some two years ago. So because of that, um, it, this is one of those blue chip key issues that was always popular 
it, it now is a great time to be buying this book with an eye to the future. You know, when they relaunched that Squadron Supreme, I didn't pick it up for the story. I picked it up for the Alex Garner covers, but I ended up reading it and actually enjoying the Squadron Supreme, the last series that they did with them. I'm pretty sure I just said Supreme, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that Marvel Max series that they did also was very good. And then hitting us right in the middle of the list, we have those Walking Dead comics, but we're talking about the first appearances. Yeah, and this is another one where, you know, Johnny Speculator would sit there and go, oh, guys, the show, it's not popular anymore. It's over. It's, you know, half these characters have died. I know. I get it. But we have to start looking at this different. Um, Walking Dead got popular because it, we were watching the show, and as it was un unfolding in front of us, these first appearances were becoming relevant on the screen, and everyone took that ride through the spec cycle, and now it's over. But um, part of the reason why the show has lost popularity is certainly the creative in the show, um, certainly some of the loss of actors, without a doubt. But some of it is just the times have changed, right? This show's been on, what, 10 years, 11 years? Um, in the last 10 or 11 years, if you're not paying attention, the metrics on television have completely changed. Because 10 or 11 years ago, streaming services were not the thing that they are today. Um, it, Brian and I are professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling is more popular than ever, but draws half a television audience that it did 10 years ago. Um, and that's just the way that it is. That's the way that things have become. So that was what we've seen. But there's a flip side to that, Brian. And what that means is because people have become so oriented with streaming services, you and I have had this conversation about Walking Dead. I think this show has a chance to be a timeless television show. There is more office merchandise produced today than at any point during the office's run on television. That is because the office is as popular, if not more popular now, in its second, third, fourth viewings on Netflix than it was during its original run on cable television. I believe that The Walking Dead is going to be a show that's going to have the opportunity to have evergreen life that generations of people are going to watch. And then on top of it, we know there is more content. There is going to be a new spinoff show coming. There is going to be movies. And all of this is going to bring up the fandom again. And I, my argument is, I think these first appearances, these keys, these original keys from the beginning, Michonne, uh, the governor, um, Glenn. Yeah, I really think uh, uh, that they've probably bottomed out or at least come very close to it. Uh, they've gone just consistently down for the last two to three years. And I really think that we've gotten to a point where like, how much lower can we really go from where they're at? I think there'll always be a certain level of popularity because of the nostalgia and the low print of especially the early issues. Um, but even later up into Negan and the Whisperers, I, I think that these are, there's some of these, like the Whisperers first appearance is like, is our cover price book at this point again. Um, I think these are, these are books that we, we should be paying attention to because they have a real chance to live forever. And it'll be interesting to see if the next generation, five to 10 years from now, finds certain characters more appealing than the original generation who watched the show did because we've seen that happen with other uh, shows in streaming. So well, this is another pick, just like Heroes Were Born, and I expect to have people tell me that I'm missing the boat. This is what we're trying to do with this list. This is what we're trying to do with this show. We're trying to be forward thinking and outside the box thinking. And, um, I think for all of those reasons, on top of the fact that Brian, classic is classic, and Walking Dead is as classic as it gets for independent core comics. Um, and I think that Walking Dead isn't going anywhere. Yeah, you never know. You might get a little bit of resurgence with those, that color issues they got coming out, right? Yeah. Yeah, a whole new market gets a chance to read it um, as they go. I think a lot of people watched the show and didn't read the comic. Yep. You mentioned The Office. I usually watch that about every two years I go through and rewatch that. And then every Christmas I watch Band of Brothers in the Pacific. We're now getting to the top of the list and coming in at number five, we get that Secret Wars number three. Yeah, and you get kind of two first appearances here with Titania and Volcano. But really, it's titanium that we're talking about. Now, this is still in the speculation zone. We don't know this for sure. Well, here's what we know. We know that a She-Hulk television show is coming. We know that She-Hulk doesn't have a lot of natural adversaries. And Titania has been the one that most people have kind of gravitated towards as the most likely villain for that television show. We also know that 
the man Becky Lynch. I mentioned Brian and I are wrestling fans, and Becky Lynch is about as good as it gets in the history of women's wrestling, has signed a deal with Marvel to enter the MCU in some undisclosed role. And in this role, along with her uh, current pregnancy, was enough for her to retire and walk away from WWE, really at the height of her popularity. So this has led those of us who are wrestling fans who also are in the comic community to believe that whatever role she signed on for must be a pretty significant role if it was enough for her not to do on the side, but to totally walk away from WWE. And I think that possibly being the villain in this upcoming uh, She-Hulk Disney Plus show would certainly be uh, that type of appearance. But here's the thing, even if it's not, even if you miss on that spec, and that's not one I'm coming up with, the, the market, the internet's already talking about that. But even if you miss on that, certainly She-Hulk has a limited number of villains. Certainly she will be a villain in, with She-Hulk at some point. And if the rumors are true, they've cast Allison Brie as She-Hulk. That's a major name attached to that character. They're going to do justice with that character. Um, so I would be looking at anything surrounded. And here's the thing. this We mentioned two first appearances. This book is like five bucks, uh, you know, 10 bucks at the most if you're looking for like a nice copy, a new stand copy. Um, so great book to pick up cheap. Coming at number four this week. This is a book that took off like nuclear when we were talking about that Captain America Winter Soldier movie. I mean, this is one of those books everyone was talking about. And we got that Captain America number six. Right. So you mentioned it. People have talked about this before, whether it's the regular cover or the variant. Certainly the variant's a little better because you got Bucky on the cover. But um, whether whether we're talking about this from a speculation reason, because certainly this book is going to see spikes. Um, Captain America and Winter Soldier is, uh, or, or Winter Soldier and Falcon, excuse me, is, uh, is coming and is going to be one of the first releases on Disney+. Plus. Not to mention, it's just an epic run of Brubaker. Right, right. So without a doubt, well, I was going to get to that. That's, that's the other point that I'm going to get to is um, in the short term, you're going to see games with this because it's one of the first releases that Disney Plus is going to do. My guess is these Marvel shows are going to be next level popular because we know things like what the budget is for them, um, what they're, the fact that they're tying into the MCU, and we saw what Mandalorian did. Um, I think these are going to be phenomenons. And that being the first one, I think it's going to benefit from that. So I imagine that there'll be a bump for Winter Soldier in general. But what you just said is key, Brian. Classic is classic is always going to be something that we talk about. It's always going to be something that is important. And I think at this point, we have to acknowledge that like everything Bucky Barnes does before becoming the Winter Soldier kind of doesn't matter. His final form um, is that of the Winter Soldier. This is the first appearance of this character. This is a major character in Marvel Comics and War at this point. There is no Captain America without Bucky Barnes. And then this kind of tied that whole story together. Uh, I think over the long haul of, of collecting, this is really going to be a blue chip and it maybe isn't looked at that way. And it certainly isn't priced that way. So while this is maybe a little bit more expensive than say the book we just talked about, um, definitely a book that I think is undervalued from where the ceiling for it is. We're now to the top three. And at number three, a lot of people tend to shy away from those ultimate comics, that ultimate universe, right? Every now and then you see books pick, pick up a little bit. But here we're talking about Ultimate Comics Fantastic Four, issues number 21 and 22. So I'm one of those people that stay away from the Ultimate Comics universe. That era of Marvel missed me. I wasn't in comics when that was coming out. So it really just, um, God, I didn't have the same nostalgia connection. Um, Miles Morales, I was able to instantly understand the popularity and get behind. And, yeah, it's like, the, to me, it was like the GoBots, the Transformers. <laughs> right, yeah, it just it never felt like uh, the real thing. Um, and I know that some people connect with it in a major way. But the reason why these issues are important is they're the first appearance, whether cameo, first book, you know, if you know anything about me, you know, I hate that argument. So that's why we put both of issues on there of Marvel zombies. And we've seen the popularity of deceased. Unfortunately, the Marvel Zombies Resurrection book kind of got hurt by delays due to COVID, and I don't think it's ever really going to get off the ground as far as major popularity. No, because Deceased, got, Dead Planet got to get in there. Yeah, and, and, and this, that's what they ended up doing. Is right. and Tom Taylor's killing that story. Right, so, so between Deceased having popularity with the first volume and then going into the second volume with uh, Dead Planet and Dead Planet being so good, so much better than I think everyone really expected it to be, um, being really a true follow-up to Deceased. Uh, 
it kind of hurts. So Marvel has taken it on the chin, but either way, we're talking about this two-platform system, right? Marvel can get sick with it. And DC's trying to build that with HBO Max and then feature-length films through Warner Brothers. But there are so many things that Marvel can do. We've already seen, like, with What If, uh, a series that seems like, how could you ever do What If? Well, they're doing it animated. There is so much room to do something with this Marvel Zombies. They're going into horror. They're bringing in the horror elements into the MCU already. Um, I don't think we would ever see an MCU Marvel Zombies movie, but I could see animated, and I could see uh, a a possibly a kind of Elseworlds Disney Plus you type thing. To their video games. I mean, they're really concentrating on video games now with PlayStation oh, yeah. Spider-Man. You got Miles Morales. You got Avengers coming up. For sure. So a Marvel Zombies video game would be enough of an announcement to pop these books. And I think that as everyone talks about Marvel Zombies, they kind of don't realize these first appearances exist out there. Um, also, I would say bonus issue would be to be on the lookout for issue 30, which I believe is the first cover piece of Marvel Zombies, um, which is much cheaper. But it's one of those great throw-ins uh, if you're picking up. If you're looking at the back issue bins and you're seeing these issues, grab 30 as well. Then at number two, these are some books that I never understood why they always seem to not carry the value that I thought they should. That you're seeing exclusive variants with this artist, with these characters, go for way more money than these actual books. And we're talking about this amazing Spider-Man run for those Del Auto variants. Right. And the naysayers are going to say, well, it's a connecting variant. So if you don't have the whole set, you may, there's a disjointed feel. And some of the, certainly some of the issues have some of the smaller characters on them. Um, but that's actually what I like about this. And definitely the print ones were big. This was ASM in the height of the popularity of Spider-Verse. But that's exactly why this is key. Um, we know how big the Spider-Verse is going to be. There is another animated feature coming in 2022. There is a live action Spider-Verse movie on the way. We have seen the breadcrumbs. We know it's coming. Uh, if you don't believe it, then you, you don't understand the way companies like to make money. Um, Spider-Verse is, is going to be here in a major way. People understand the multiverse. They, they get it. Children were able to understand it with the, with the animated feature. Um, I can't be more bullish on anything that I am the Spider-Man Spider-Verse. And when you start to look at it, um, variant covers are something we're going to start talking about with these lists. We haven't gotten into a lot of variant covers. Um, certainly the variant market is something that makes people uh, feel some sort of way. But there are certain variants where there is a safety in the investment. And when you started talking about a name like Gabriel Delata, you're talking about a guy uh, who's maybe the tops of the tops when it comes to these variants. You mentioned some of his retailer exclusives go hundreds and hundreds of dollars and sell out in two minutes um, of characters as goofy as goofy. But yet here we are and we're talking about the entire Spider-Verse. Um, if you've never seen this set, I'm sure Brian's got it real cool on screen for you to see. Super this, cool. This, this connecting set um, depicts the entire Spider-Verse. So you're getting Del Otto Miles and you're getting Del Otto Peter Parker. You're getting Del Otto Peter Porker. You're getting Del Otto uh, Spider-Man Noir. You're getting Del Otto um, uh, Spider-Gwen. You're getting Del Otto Silk. You're getting Iron Spider. You're getting it all on, this, on these covers. Um, and when the Spider-Verse movie hit, the individual issues popped big time. On top of it, the set goes for a premium. If you can put the entire set together, you actually get more per issue for the set. Nine is tough because there's some first appearances in nine. Um, but that this is something that I'm very bullish on. Uh, a lot of these covers are still available like around ratio, like $25, $30. To me, uh, these are probably $100 books waiting to happen. And hitting us in that number one spot this week. Open the list with the fairly current back issue, and we're going to close it with one just the same. And we are talking about Canto 2, The Hollow Men number one. And this is a book that absolutely is probably still available for cover price wherever you get your comics. And this is one that people are going to look at me and go, what? Yeah, I know. We've had the Canto creators on three times. They're friends of ours. But here's the thing. Canto number one, the first print, first volume, is selling for $100. That means that the market believes in the investability of this product. And so if you take that as a given, the market believes in Kanto. Okay, why this book is, a, why is it on the list? Well, it's on the list because there's three first appearances in this book. This extends the world of Kanto. And you have to look and say, well, reader buzz is great. And 
you can invest in the book for reader buzz, but ultimately people are investing in this because they also think that this has some sort of media life beyond just comic books, whether it's movie, television, uh, products like toys and things like that. People believe in Canto. And if you believe in that, well, it's not going to be a movie just featuring Canto. And Brian, you and I have talked about this, man. This is one of the things people miss with independent books. They only look at issue one and they don't realize that characters appear in all kinds of different issues within the independent series and they're missing the boat. And I think that if you believe that Canto is headed for, as we like to say, hashtag seven seasons and a movie, um, then this is a book you need to be paying attention to. And it's available for cover price. And it's available right now, cover price. And you're getting three first appearances that are important to the Canto universe. Um, and we know that there's a lot more Canto going forward. I can't, can't give away a lot of details, but in our discussion with the creators, um, they definitely hinted and uh, were able to tell us kind of off camera that there's a lot more Canto coming. So this is a property that I'm bullish on. This is a property that I think the market's bullish on and clearly um, is going to keep being in demand so long as there is new Canto product. There is going to be new Canto product for some time. And this is a great opportunity to get these characters that you may one day see in a Pixar movie or uh, in some sort of animated uh, feature or television show. And now is a great opportunity to get it while the getting is good. Right. And that's one of the great things I like about this list that we do every week. We're not talking about that one in 10 and that one in 25. We, everyone knows about those. Those are hot, hot, hot covers. This is that cover A that you can get for cover yeah. price. It's the list for the comic reader, that comic collector that, hey, there's stuff out there that you can add to your collection that's not going to break your bank. Yeah, we put some higher priced books on this list from time to time. We, we always feel those still have meat on the bone. But here it is, cover price, like I always say, price of a lottery ticket. And it's just a great read. It's just a great story. Lo there's a reason why we love having David Boo and Drew Zucker on the channel because we love this title so much as well. So no more on the list, deservedly so, and great story. And like Jack said, we got three first appearances in it. And they're right on the cover of Cover A. So while everybody's paying attention to the variants, because like you said, they're amazing and they're gorgeous and we love them too, that Cover A is just massively undercover. So there it is, guys. There's our top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for this week. So make sure you're looking out for these when you're looking through those back issue bins or browsing sales online because some of these are well obtainable on there as well. But Jack, anything else before we go? Well, definitely. Now we talked about this with number 10 on the list. We only find them when they're dead, number one. If that's a book you like, if that's a book that you want to invest in, or if that's a book you just want to add to your collection, we've got a great exclusive on our website, simplemanscomics.com, as well as our partner site, the 616comics.com. We've got an exclusive from John Boyd Myers, limited to 500 copies. We've also got limited versions, limited to 250 and just 100 copies. So again, that's simplemanscomics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. We only find them when they're dead, number one, from John Boyd Myers. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Go and try your luck. Test me in again. We let it rain. Please don't start us up. Got that black and white, that yin and yang. Mr. Officer, please don't search us. We don't got it.